Good evening, everybody. It is good to see you this evening. I know we've got fall break and many are out, but hey, I'm glad you're here. I appreciate you being here. And we are going to study from the Bible. Amen? We're going to look to God's Word, and I hope that this lesson will be an encouragement to you. We are, I'm going to uh, start a series talking about the cross, and we'll have several lessons on the cross, and I'm actually really excited about these uh, lessons that uh, I'm working on right now. And, and tonight, I want us to start in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18, kind of to get us going in the understanding of what I'd like to talk about. But I saw this, and I thought it was a pretty good intro for the lesson. It has been said that the heart of Christianity is the Bible. And the heart of the Bible is the cross. And the heart of the cross is the very heart of God. A heart full of tenderness for a sinful and erring man. A heart that was bruised and broken while making atonement for our guilt. The cross of Christ is awful and glorious object ever seen by men or angels. Amen? Think about that. The most awful and glorious object for both men and angels ever seen. And the Apostle Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 1 verse 18, he says, For the message of the cross is foolish. Those who are being saved, it is the power of God. But what is this message of the cross? If we want to receive this message, how do we find out the information? The word. We go to the Bible to learn about it. Through it, we see the real beauty and the real understanding of what the cross is all about. Four points tonight, and the lesson will be yours. The message of the cross is God's word concerning deliverance. Think about this. The holiness and the righteousness of God collides with the sin of man at the cross. God's holiness, God's righteousness, Jesus, the Messiah comes in contact with those sinful us. We've done contrary to his word, not only us, but all humanity. And at the cross, together. You think about 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, that says, For he made him, the holy one, the righteous one, who knew no sin, to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. And think about what 1 John chapter 3, verse 5 says. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins. And in him, there is no sin. In 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, the Bible tells us, For Christ also suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit. In Romans chapter 5, verse 8, it says, But God demonstrates his own love towards us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So when we think about this message, when we think about what Jesus did for us, the way that he delivered us from a terrible way, does that drive us? Does that motivate us? Or is this message foolishness? There is no way 
that if we are a child of God, that this is not a motivator. Amen? And if it is a motivator, then 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 14 and 16 are true. Because as obedient children, we don't conform ourselves to the former lusts, as in our ignorance. But as he who called us is holy, we're also holy in all of our conduct. Because it is written, be holy, for I am holy. The one who died for us now, because we understand what he's done, we have made the commitment to be just like him. We appreciate what he's done so much and what he's delivered us from that we have dedicated our lives to become as holy as him. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1 tells us, Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. This is a great verse. This is a, a great verse to think about. All the promises that come through Jesus Christ, all of the things that we are blessed with because of Jesus Christ, all of these things that the Bible tells us we have in Christ, Brethren, we should be cleansing ourselves from all filthiness. We should be cleansing ourselves from all things that are not honoring the Lord. And we should be striving to be holy because we understand just who he is. Amen? And think about 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 7. For God did not call us to uncleanliness... Jesus didn't die on the cross. He didn't go through all of those uh, temptations and try to, uh, even though he was tempted, he still was without sin. He didn't go through all of those things so that we could just continue to be unclean. Amen? No, he called us to be holy. Brethren, do we appreciate the deliverance that we've received from Jesus and what he did on the cross. We just sung about it. And can you imagine? I want you to think about this in your minds as you go out this week. What I said earlier. The cross is the most awful and the most glorious object ever. The things that were said to him. The way that he was treated could you imagine having a crown of thorns poked on your head and a robe put around you and just the mocking and the making fun of the outright disrespect to God Almighty? And he said nothing because he loved us, because he cared about us. And when you think about that, 1 Peter 2, 24 says, who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. You know, we know these things. We've probably heard these things a million times. But does it ever get old? Does it ever become a thought in your mind where you say, you know what, I don't need to hear that anymore, Matt. I appreciate uh, you putting together that lesson, but, you know, I, I don't really need that anymore. I beg to say no, because if it is, then you've put yourself in a very dangerous situation, haven't you? You put yourself in a situation where all of a sudden you know a little bit better than God. All over through the word of God, we see this concept, this understanding of the cross and what it means to us. You remember every Lord's Day, what do we do? We come together to break bread to remember what? The death of Jesus Christ. We remember what he did on the cross. The pain that he went through for us. And we will remember that until the day he returns. The message of the cross is God's word concerning deliverance, but it's also one of love and sacrifice. When God gave his son, 
It was not with any expectation that some way he would be able to escape it. God knew that the only way to save us was through the power of the cross. The only way that we were going to be saved was through the cross. So the cross stands for the love of God the Father, as we talked about this morning, and the sacrifice of God the Son for us. Think about how powerful that thought is. Think about what that cross really means. We see the love of God the Father, and we see the willing sacrifice of Jesus, the Messiah, for us. No wonder Ephesians 5, 2 says, and we should walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. The sacrifice that Jesus did on the cross was satisfying. It was the perfect sacrifice. It ended all the sacrifices that were needed by the bulls and the goats because that blood just couldn't do it. But the blood of Jesus stopped it once for all. And Jesus was able to be raised up into heaven and was able to sit next to God Almighty. What a powerful thing. What an encouraging thing. Jesus himself said this. He said, just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, he came to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Oh, the cross is very important, isn't it? It's very important to us to think about as Christians. It's very important for us to understand what it means to us. Only Jesus could love us while we were enemies and sacrifice his life for us. You remember what Romans chapter 5 verse 10 says. It says, for if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God. Through the death of his son, much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Think about the concept enemies. Think about what an enemy is. It's somebody against you. You know, if somebody's against me, I'm not going to be too excited to be their friend. <laughs> How about you? I mean, just be honest. If somebody wants to do nothing except go against what my... If your child just went against everything that you said, how would you act? <laughs> There'd be a lot of whoopings going around, wouldn't it? A lot of belts getting wore out. A lot of ground and a lot of phones getting taken away, right? If your child did nothing except not listen to you, it would be like they're an enemy. Even though we were enemies... We didn't do what God asked us to do. We disrespected him by saying things that we weren't supposed to say. We lived in such a way that was disrespectful to him. And you know what? I'm so thankful. And we should never forget it. That despite all that, he still went to that cross. He knew what I was going to do. He knew what I was going to say. He knew how I was going to act. He knew how I was going to talk about people when they weren't in front of me. He knew all of those things. But despite all of that, he still did it. That's an awesome God. That's an awesome. That's an awesome person. That's an awesome friend. Amen? Even when we were enemies, he allowed us to be reconciled to God. He did it. Anyway, the sufferings and the sacrifice of Jesus is proof of the intensity of the love of God. Inscribed upon the cross, I read this and I thought this is really good. Inscribed on the cross, we see in shining letters, God is love. Don't we? Could you imagine
This is moving, man. I don't ever want to get, hey, and you, you hold me accountable for this. The day I get up here and I just don't get emotional about this, call me out, please. Please. Because something's done happen. Could you imagine the moment when Jesus is on the cross and he calls out, why have you forsaken me? It was a big deal. We don't appreciate that. We're too far removed from that. In that moment, he had everybody's sin on him. And he took it. Man, if that don't motivate you, if that don't move you, if that don't make you want to tell somebody about Jesus, I have no idea what will. I love you guys, but I don't know if I'd die for you. I hope I would. I hope when the bullet was coming, I'd dive in the way. I really do. He did it. When a doubt in his mind. Because he loves you. And he loves me. The cross is amazing. The message of the cross is God's word concerning deliverance. The message of the cross is God's word concerning love and sacrifice. And the message of the cross is God's word concerning peace. I've said this before and I, I'll say it again. One of my favorite uh, words in the Hebrew is shalom. Peace. Peace. The cross stands for peace. Peace. Through Jesus, if you would, turn in your Bibles to Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1, verses 19 through 23. Now watch this. For it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell... And by him to reconcile all things to himself, by him, whether things on earth, things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of his cross. And you, you brethren, you guys, and me, we were once alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now he is reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight. Think about what he did for us. Not only did he clean us up, he made us be able to be above reproach in the sight of God the Father. Now that's big time. I don't deserve that. I don't deserve that. You know, it goes back to what I talked about on Wednesday night. You know, the, the attitude sometimes that we have is we're just a sinner saved by grace. That's not how Jesus wants us to act. If any man is in Christ, he's a new creation. You're brand new. You're a new machine. You have been restored back to the original. <laughs> now that's awesome. Now that should change the way we live. That should change the way we think. Am I a sinner saved by grace? Absolutely. Do I need to respect that? Absolutely. But what I also need to respect on the same idea is that in his body, in his flesh, he presents us holy and blameless and above reproach 
in his sight. Now it becomes on you. Look at what verse 23 says. If indeed you continue in the faith, grounded and steadfast and are not a move and not and are not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you heard. Have we moved away from it? Boy, I love that gospel, don't you? I love it. When I heard it, I couldn't get enough of it. I wanted to tell somebody else about it. Hey, man, I know this guy. He loved you so much that he was willing to die for you, and it's not going to get old to me. I'm just going to keep getting more excited about it every time I talk to somebody new. Have there been people that have come along the way that wanted it and left? Absolutely. But that's not going to detour me. That's not going to distract me. Hey, that's your loss. You're missing out. You're missing out. Turn with me to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. If you're the only one that makes heaven your home, it's going to be worth it. I'm going to tell you right now. If you are the only one that makes heaven your home, if everybody else doesn't want it, and you're the only one, you will be amazed. It's worth it. Look at what he says in verse, uh, I'm going to start in verse 11, chapter 2, verse 11. Therefore, remember... That you once Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision made in the flesh by hands. That at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. Think about that, what we are before we're in Christ. We have no hope. And we're without, without God in the world. Because we're doing it our own way. But. Now in Christ Jesus. You who were once far off have been brought near. How? By the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace. Who has made both, has, has made both one. And has broken down the middle wall of separation. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, that is the law of commandments, contained in ordinances, so as to create in himself one new man from two, thus making peace. And watch verse 16. And that he might reconcile them both to God in one body. How, brethren? Through the cross. Thereby putting to death enmity. And he came and preached peace to you who were far off and to those who were near. For through him, we both have access by one spirit to the Father. The message of the cross is God's word concerning peace. And finally... The message of the cross is, the, is God's word concerning deliverance. The message of the cross is God's word concerning love and sacrifice. The message of the cross is God's word concerning peace. And the message of the cross is God's word concerning salvation and power. Look at the verse that we started with. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. That is the silliest story I've ever heard. But to us, brethren, the ones who know that ain't no silly fable. You remember what Peter said? We don't tell you silly Wise, these fables that these people were talking about, this Greek mythology. No, we're not telling you something that's a made-up story. We saw it with our own eyes. 
John said, the things that we've seen and the things that we've heard, I'm trying to tell you, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God and the Word was God. And then he goes on to say, and that Word became flesh and he dwelt among us. And he came for a purpose. And that purpose was for you and for me to be saved, to be reconciled to him. It says, for those who are perishing, it's foolishness. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. The cross is God's symbol of his almighty power to save. Amen? At the cross, Jesus lost his life. But he lost his life trusting that he would be delivered from death. That is hard for me to grasp. I guess because I'm not God, but if I was God and I knew all kinds of... I mean, I willingly gave myself up to be in the position where I could never get it again. But he did it with no problem. He said, you know what? I know you're going to raise me from the dead because you said you would. And that's good enough for me. What an example. Because of that, we have the good news, brethren, don't we? We have the way one can be delivered from death. Forgiven of sins. And be able to live forever with the Almighty. And it comes by way of the gospel. The death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I want to close with these thoughts. And let this be your verse that you think about this week. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 30 and 31. But of him, you are in Christ Jesus who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption that as it is written, he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. As you're glorying this week, as you're thinking about those things that you've been blessed with, hey, tell somebody, to God be the glory. Great things He has done. We serve a mighty God who reigns from heaven and was willing to give us a place to live one day. While the message of the cross may be foolish to many, we understand that it makes the way for us to be saved. Amen. Hey, brethren, have a good week. Be courageous. Be strong. Look for some opportunities to love on somebody. Look for some opportunities to encourage somebody. Be strong and courageous and know that the God you serve loves you and he's there for you. Pray to him. Reach out to him. And and love the brethren. Maybe you're here today and you need prayers. Maybe you're here and you're struggling. Or maybe you're here and you need to obey the gospel. Please, don't miss the opportunity to be added to the family of God. You do it by way of the gospel. Believe in who Jesus is, repenting of your sins, confessing his name before men, being baptized in water, and living a life faithful unto death. When Jesus will give us the sweetest words, and I'm so ready to hear them, aren't you, brethren? I'm so ready. Well done. Well done. Good job. I appreciate it. I appreciate you doing it because you love me. Well done, my good and faithful servant. If you need to obey the gospel, if you need to have prayers, whatever you need, come right now together and stand.